Hi, everybody. Good evening and welcome to the webinar uh, on the platform Nutspace. Uh, I'm Rohini Vich and um, we are all here for the webinar on raising readers. My co-facilitator Kavya Mehta from Bukistan Bookstore is also here. I'm going to add her to Spotlight. Hi, Kavya. Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, okay, one second. I'm gonna. Yes. <laughs> I hope I'm back. Um, hi, everybody. Hi, I'm Kavya. I run an online children's bookstore and happy to see you all. Yeah, it's lovely to see everybody here and uh, we're just waiting, still waiting for a few more people to join in. In the meantime, um, I'm posting a link, everybody, in case you have any questions uh, uh, right at the outset, uh, please use this link to post your questions to us. And uh, even during the webinar, in case there is any question that comes to your mind, please post your questions here on this link. Uh, we'll have access to all these questions and we'll try and answer all of them. Also to give you a little premise, um, how we've structured the webinar is that uh, we had posted about this webinar long time back and um, we had asked for parents to share uh, questions on raising readers and they sent us their questions. You all have sent us your questions, teachers, parents, and we use those questions to sort of plan our uh, webinar today. So you'll see a lot of those questions as we share screen and we'll uh, put out our presentation you'll see a lot of those questions there and we'll try and answer those um, questions as we take uh, this webinar forward i can see a lot of children here as well uh, that's great and wonderful to see the children here after all we are here for the children but it'll be great if you call your parents too and uh, so that they can be a part of the webinar too and they can attend uh, the session and understand how uh, you all as a family can uh, uh, become readers and family of readers yeah so um I can see that uh, the participants are quickly filling in. Kavya, would you like to start by introducing yourself uh, to everybody? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Kavya Mehta. I run an online children's bookstore. Uh, I'm a. I call myself a book curator because I think that's what bookstores do. Um, uh, they bring together great literature, and um, so. Everything on in my bookstore, on my shelves, I handpick, I try to research a lot, I read a lot of it. And um, I try to, I my mission is to raise more and more readers. Uh, and I want to make people of every age readers. So um, I believe that everybody, no matter your age, you can become a reader and reading can be your solace. It can be your, books can be your friend for life. And uh, that's sort of my mission. And uh, that's what I want to do. So, so I call myself a curator of books. I put together books for every age from zero to limitless. <laughs> and uh, uh, that's what I do. That's what Bookistan is all about. It's a bookstore for everybody for a lot of ages. Yeah, that's great. Nice to uh, see you here, uh, Kavya, and a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Rohini Vij. I'm a professional storyteller. I'm an educator. And I'm the founder of Nutspace. Uh, raising readers uh, is a topic that is very, very close to my heart as well. And um, I actively speak on the topic. And I also have two readers of my own, <laughs> my son who's 10 and my daughter who's three. And a lot that I share is about my journey with them. And of course, uh, the other children that I am associated with as part of my classes and uh, uh, schools and educators as part of the content that I create for uh, them and uh, the teachers that I train. So um, thank you so much for being here. Like I mentioned, at any point, if you have a question, you can put it into the chat box, but also I shared a link. So it'll be great if you put your question there, because that will be a more structured way for us to get your questions and we'll try and answer each one there. Uh, I will be sharing a presentation now and uh, for those who are joining in now and as you keep joining in, it will be easy for you to draw context because um, these questions that are there on the, uh, the presentation are questions that were sent to us by parents and educators. We have just um, organized the questions into three different age groups that we are going to be uh, talking about today. So we're going to talk about uh, 
raising readers when it comes to babies and toddlers so if you're a new parent or if you have a, a young child that segment will interest you we then go on to uh, early readers and um, uh, independent readers but uh, still uh, sort of uh, getting uh, you know there so early and middle readers and finally we'll go on to young adults teens and uh, advanced readers so that's how we've organized uh, the workshop today so i'd like to share my screen now so stay with me and just a second Okay, I hope you're able to see my screen. Uh, Kavya, could you please confirm? I yeah. Okay, lovely. All right. Uh, just a request to everybody to please not scribble on the screen. One second, I'm going to also enable that setting. I hope I'm able to can you guide me Kavya because usually my son is here and he helps me with that and today he's not here so uh, okay one second I'll be able to do that disabled okay lovely excellent I did it yeah all right <laughs> great uh, uh okay great so um yes so before we really get into it um Kavya this is a question I think uh, I'd like to answer this as well but maybe first you can go ahead why do you read why do I read? Um, uh, okay, so I started reading when I was about 10, when I was in fifth grade. And I think when I was reading as a young person reading, I read for adventure. I read for the escape. Um, I wanted more adventure in life. And I think um, those are the books that I, I always, I was more inclined to read. And those are the books that I always, that had my eye. And uh, so I read for escape as a kid uh, growing up. Um, I think now when I read, the definition has evolved for me. Uh, now when I read, I read for a lot of reasons. I think um, it. Um, I think it's sort of like my meditation. Uh, I I feel like I find myself in books. I grow with it. Yes, I evolve with books. Yes, I also find myself in there. Um, and so yeah, so books now are sort of like my meditation. Uh, they are still my escape, but they also calm me. Uh, on a certain level and uh, like I said I like to find myself in books. Thank you. Uh, thank you for sharing and I think um, that's uh, probably uh, kind of my answer as well but I think what I'd like to add uh, you know to that is that I think the reason why I read is because um, I as cliche as it may sound uh, because I love to travel and uh, each time I read a book, um, I feel that it's a new journey that I take. And uh, there are new people that I meet and uh, I meet myself as well in a lot of books and stories. And that's um, very reassuring because I meet myself in uh, very different circumstances and I see myself in uh, experiencing different kinds of emotions. And I think um, it's uh, reassuring, it's, it's uh, entertaining, uh, it's really an escape at times but also uh, a way of finding myself like you said and um, it's very refreshing to the mind as well so uh, maybe when I'm um, I feel very overwhelmed I go to books as well so it's uh, probably um, how one would unwind at the end of the day I always unwind with a book and uh, that's my reason uh, for reading so um, yeah moving on now uh, like I mentioned to all of you the way we've organized this webinar is as per the three age groups uh, that we are, um, you know, talking about today. So we'll start with starting your journey as a reader, uh, as, as a parent who raises a reader. So we want to start with the youngest age group, uh, babies and toddlers. So here are a few questions that we received. The questions on the screen are what is the right time to start reading to your child um, my child is too young right now what will my child understand um, are a few questions that we receive from parents with very little babies very young children so um i'd like to start and kavya of course i'll you know ask you to contribute but um, the right time according to me to start reading to your child is um, 
as soon as possible or as early as possible so uh, you know drawing from my own personal experience as a parent i started reading uh, the moment i found out that i was going to be a mother and i think that helped me because it gave me the confidence to read aloud which is something that not many of us are confident doing you know picking up a book and just reading aloud we may read to ourselves and read in our heads but reading aloud is um, something that you know get you you get used to when you do more and more of it so um, as soon as you can you start reading and when the baby arrives of course uh, it is a crucial time you know in many ways because you are adjusting to each other but uh, reading is a wonderful way to bond with your child and um, i also feel that uh, you know and it's not just me but i feel there's a lot of i've read a lot there's a lot of scientific research around uh, how quickly the brain of a baby uh, is growing and you know the the plasticity of the brain brain is immense in those early years and uh, reading in a way is a positive stimulation that you give to your baby so when you read to your baby in a way you're uh, assuring uh, stimulation to them and ensuring that uh, they grow up uh, with uh, a high iq a rich repository of words a love for language so um, you know that's uh, my take on this kavya would you like to contribute to this um i i agree with you completely i think as early as possible is best um with your baby if you want to let them sleep for 3 4 months that's okay too but i think the moment they turn 3 or 4 months old i think by then you should start and they when they start sitting by 6 months uh they start responding as well and they can hold a book so uh, as soon as possible is best i also think that it's a great reading to your baby it's like it's a great bonding exercise so if you want to take the pressure off of yourself i think think of it as a bonding exercise you know you're just you're interacting with your baby when you're reading out to them or when you're telling them a story so uh, just think of it as a bonding exercise and yes start as soon as possible because the sooner you start i mean the more they'll enjoy it, the more time they will you're giving to books and they'll enjoy it and i think the habit is more likely to stick around lovely moving on now um, to the next how should i read to my baby and um, which language should i read in and uh, you know i'm not very good at reading um also another element here that gets added is uh, you know my child is more entertained by videos um so i don't have the patience to read there is no reading culture at my place so i'd like to answer these one uh, you know at a time so the first is um, how should i read to my baby i think that would be how you talk to your baby as a parent uh, we have uh, you know we have we have very naturally communicating with our child we look at them we make conversation with them and even though we know that the child doesn't have the speech to talk back we still talk you know so reading is exactly like that how you would talk to your baby that's exactly how you read uh, to your baby um uh, read in any language that you like any language that you're comfortable with see the idea is when you expose a baby to books uh, and as early as possible you expose them to a culture and books become a way of life it becomes something that is very normal you know normal um, for anybody growing up you know i got exposed to books because that's what i saw around me so that's what happens so that's of, of course one important thing uh the next is i'm not very good at reading so i'm that i get this a lot you know because they sometimes people say you know you're a storyteller you naturally dramatize and when i'm sure your kids find it more entertaining i'm not as entertaining as you are i get that a lot and um, i just want to tell you that you are your baby's hero and um, you know your baby loves your voice your baby loves looking at you so uh, however you read to your baby your baby will love it and i think uh, that's that's the most important thing and um, yeah and um, another thing about gadgets uh, that's something that i would like to you know sort of warn uh, parents of very young children uh, you know with about and that is that yes um, if you show the baby a screen and there are fast moving images there's um, music playing so children will um, obviously get attracted to it but that is passive engagement uh, which is harming their brain and uh, not doing anything good to them so please steer clear of gadgets 
uh, as long as you can, for as long as you can, but at least zero to two year old kids between that age group should not be exposed to gadgets at all. And that's when you can really introduce them to books and, uh, you know, develop that love for books and reading. Um, as far as the reading culture is concerned, I think uh, every single effort that you make uh, makes a difference. It matters. So in case you start, uh, if you are the only one reading, doesn't matter. That will also make a difference. And gradually, you will realize that when the baby is responding so well, others will also start picking up books and they'll also start reading to children because it's like playing. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Kavya, would you like to add something to this? Um, yeah, I think you pretty much covered most of it. Uh, I think uh, so if you I think one thing that I feel if you feel not confident enough to read to your baby, I think start with something really small, short, something really short. And uh, anyways, for the first year, year and a half, I think it's better to stick to very short mm -hmm. books. And when you're sticking to very short books, I think what it does it, it gives it makes you confident. And I think by the time that phase, that one year, one and a, by the time they reach that mark of one, one and a half year old, you'll start feeling more confident as, uh, you know, when you're reading aloud to your baby. So I think short books would just give you that confidence to read to your baby and to read to your baby consistently every day. I also feel that with toddlers, I think they also, uh, you know, once they start moving, they don't want to stop. They want to keep moving. They want to keep exploring, keep wandering. And at that age, I feel it's it's great if you can make books like a game, like read to them on the go. If you're reading a book about animals, just make it like an animal hide and seek and read it out to them like that. So even when they're moving, if they don't want to stop, read it to them while they're moving. But yeah. Uh, read it to them make it a game and just make it fun as interactive as you can and you can be funny for your baby the more funny you are the more they'll enjoy it and you can be silly for your baby again they, they I, I love agree. it when you do that right <laughs> yeah yeah I couldn't agree more I think uh, also they're very forgiving they're a very forgiving audience you know so okay. no matter what you do uh, they love it <laughs> so oh, yeah no wrong for your baby so yeah. anything you do the more the funnier you act the more they'll enjoy the more fun they'll have so um so you need to have no inhibitions with your baby uh read it out to them how you feel best right. and as long as you are having fun i think they will have fun too as for reading in different languages i feel i mean yes you can read to them in um, any number of languages you can read. You, I think you should read to them in your language as well as English, any other language that you know. It's great to introduce them to all of them. And um, um, I think if you feel if you feel that with English there's a slight disconnect, if you know it's not spoken at home and if you feel that the child is not responding as well in English, I think what I used to do with my nephew was translate a lot. So you can do that too. The yeah, idea is that they just enjoy the story. So, Glad you brought that up. Yeah, because I get asked, you know, this question a lot that, you know, uh, should I introduce multiple languages to my child? And, uh, you know, we don't speak in English at home. So should I read my you know, child, you uh, read to my child in English or in Hindi. And I'm glad you brought this up because I feel that babies, um, you know, have immense capabilities to understand and comprehend uh, because it's the emotion actually by the end of the day with which you're reading and they're able to read that emotion. And no, they don't get confused if you introduce them to multiple languages. In fact, it, uh, it's great for their brain plasticity, like I mentioned. Uh, so introduce them to as many languages as possible. And like Kavya mentioned, um, you know, translate if you feel uh, that you need to explain a little bit more. Uh, coming to the next question, um, my toddler wants the same book over and over again. And I think uh, this is a question that uh, we get asked a lot. In fact, uh, even in our classes when, uh, you know, children are coming in, why the same story or why the same song? And so about repetition, I think what I'd like to say is that um, repetition is key for the brain of a baby. Repetition is doing wonders. So even if you are getting bored as an adult in your child's life, uh, the, each time you read the same book to the baby, the baby is drawing a new inference. The baby is drawing a new meaning out of it. So repetition is key. It's it's wonderful. Uh, please uh, 
repeat as many times as your baby wants you to and your baby will tell you when your baby is ready to move to the new book and uh, also sometimes for, for the sake of comfort they come back to an old book and it gives them this huge sense of accomplishment that okay i know this book now or uh, also you know like i said it gives them that comfort so yeah kavya would you like to add something to that um yeah i think uh, i think uh, i think when you're reading a book what happens is that the more times that you read it the more i mean you notice something new something more each time that you read it even if you're watching a movie that happens you know when you watch a movie the second time the third time you might notice something new so when a child is reading that same book over and over again that's what they are doing they they find something new they uh, they're looking at the detail they're finding something new with each read and i think that's why they enjoy it so much i think even i do that when i'm when i like a song i listen to it on repeat so maybe it's just that they like the sound like how you're telling it so it's your telling that they're enjoying so i think enjoy that feeling that they want to listen to you on repeat <laughs> and also that one go sometimes they'll ask you to read the same book 10 times exactly that's what happened they want to read that same book in in that same sitting they'll do it they want to read it thrice maybe even more times and it takes patience but i think i think i always think of it like you know i listen to a song on repeat so i do that too so i think it's that the <laughs> they want to listen to you over and over again so wonderful uh okay moving on um i used to read actively to my child but now she's constantly distracted by gadgets she has no patience for books my child is not interested in books my child is tearing books and how do i set a reading routine i think again when it comes to babies and toddlers these are uh, very commonly asked questions and i um, see again i did cover the gadgets point a little bit and uh, is that try to keep gadgets away um, at least you know for the 0 to 2 age group and then give them gadgets in limited time durations after their two um i think um, uh, this has also got to do with the what they are seeing so if you feel that your baby is getting distracted and your baby wants a gadget too much you need to check your own screen time as well how much are you you need to monitor how much are you on the phone or uh, you know the laptop and i know that there are constraints given that most of us are working from home now and our um, you know uh, our workspace and you know their sort of uh, you know they are we are getting into workspace and home space and we are getting all of that into the same space and our children are seeing us extensively on gadgets but if we can consciously make an effort to uh, detach to switch off uh, that will make a difference because children usually ape what adults around them are doing so gadgets can be that completely second is um, uh, tearing books is a very very normal thing it's uh, it's more to do with their curiosity and i think it will happen it's bound to happen and um, as long as you are okay about it and you uh, you know repair the book mend the book uh, in front of the baby it makes a difference so that they see that you take care of your books so you love your books and you know um, you look, look after them and also at the same time i think you can give them books that won't tear like say board books or cloth books or uh, you know chewable books those are hard to tear so uh, you can avoid that but even when they get exposed to picture books you will find that uh, your toddler baby will tear books and uh, eventually they stop doing it it's just out of curiosity they do it initially and as far as uh, setting a reading routine is concerned i think uh, it depends from baby to baby it depends from child to child why because um, in my at my place in my experience with my son a bedtime reading routine really works well and you know even till date he's 10 now but he can't fall asleep without reading a book but um, i've realized that my uh, my younger one uh, she gets really stimulated when i read to her at bedtime which kind of defeats the purpose of going to bed and you know so uh, with her i read when i'm you know playing so i've identified what works uh, for which one and i think that's how you can identify what works for your kids best and i i always say that you know parents know their children the best so uh, yeah that's uh, how you can set a routine make books accessible keep them everywhere uh, they should be you know just an arms uh, reach away kavya would you like to add something yeah yeah make books accessible i agree with that uh, you know make books and books and stories and everyday conversation um 
so yeah have books at home take them to libraries take them to bookstores even when you're talking to them you're sharing a story about your childhood they will love that um so make stories and books and everyday conversation and that's what's going to want to make that's what's going to make them fall in love with stories and once they're in love with stories they will love reading too they will love being read out to too so make uh, stories an everyday conversation include stories in your everyday and that's how i think you can set a routine i think uh, you know make reading a ritual make it a family ritual like once a week you'll read together as a family again it's a great bonding exercise and also it helps you set that routine you know they look forward to that one day when you're reading together you know the parent reading together with the child um so they look forward to that one day and you know if you make it included in every day and it will become a routine so that's that's about it thank you so much for adding that important point um okay so uh, i think this is a very uh, important slide and i think um, everyone should take a look at it because see we did mention that we are going to be uh, making book recommendations which we will be we will be sharing uh, a link uh, with all of you even at the end of this uh, webinar uh, check your emails because you will get an email from our end with recommendations links and couple of more things uh, but other than that i think uh, just to, to help you understand what is the best way to pick a book for a baby and a toddler so a few things listed here on the screen um high contrast images black and white books for babies so uh, maybe i can stop sharing screen so that kavya can show you these books that she's got with her yeah so you know these are uh, these books with high contrast images you know uh, children like it it appeals to their eyes because very young babies are just learning how to focus um, so these high contrast images with bright images or you know black and white ones really make a uh, sort of difference it helps them um, uh, focus patterns lines these kind of books help um books as you'll notice this one is a small and light you know so even a baby can handle uh, this kind of a book this is a cloth book that uh, kavya is holding so maybe if you could just you know like hold it up and show it to us how light it is and uh, it's textured as well and um, i think it's it will be interesting for your baby to look at uh, again it's got some nice uh, beautiful illustrations in it uh, which uh, babies will really like to look at <laughs> uh books with big bright illustrations are uh, obviously uh, always a yes so look at that uh you can point to things uh, you know look at that and then then this is an interactive book book i think this has this has these uh, buttons and then you press would you like to press does it have battery volume no it does the volume i think is low uh, <laughs> <laughs> the rooster is just uh, <laughs> uh, cock doing but um Uh, do you hear anything yes 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 so yeah i mean interactive books also are very attractive for children i think these kind of uh, noisy books music books but even lift the flap books you know like i have um, in fact i'll be demonstrating uh, right now so that one is a lift the flap but this of course uh, this is a wonderful one the these kind of pop up books are also very attractive but also um, children find them very attractive to tear so you have to be a little careful with these uh, as well <laughs> first one was the third but yeah i the one that i'm going to be demoing with is kind of torn and uh, you know i'll show it to you and how i mended it in front of my child and uh, so yeah so um, yeah these uh, and puppet books also would you have a puppet book i do happen to have one here with me you know so this is a book with a puppet so this makes it you know like every time it, the head is sort of bobbing up and down and it kind of becomes interesting to see one uh, one movement or two a couple of you know there are lots of interesting things that uh, you know can be done uh, with a puppet book you can make different voices or you can just ask the child to copy or replicate the action so yeah um I uh, would like to demonstrate because I think I get this um, asked a lot. How do you read to a baby? So I'm um, I have one or two books here, but I think I'll probably demonstrate. Okay, I thought I'm going to demonstrate this one, which is like more like a lift the flap and it has a couple of things. But I've just changed my mind now, and I'm going to demonstrate this one because 
maybe this one works. Uh, this one is something that really worked for my baby when she was just a few months old. So she loved this and uh, this one is like I love all of me and it's uh, written by Laurie Androva and it's been uh, illustrated by Carolina Buzio. So how this, how we do this, how normally I would do this is when she would be lying in the cot, I would hold it up to her like that. So she could look at it, you know, from where she's lying down. A lot of times I would also prop her on my lap and hold it like this, you know, and then we would explore it together while she would be sitting on my lap. So do it any way that you're comfortable as long as the baby can see the illustrations now uh, books about body parts are very interesting for little babies because you're also building awareness their general awareness so it says i love my wiggle toes so i would always tickle her i would always tickle her on her toes each time i would say i love my wiggle toes and i would touch her toes so I'm also building awareness on where her toes are and I love my smelly nose and there I would probably rub my nose with her nose or touch her nose and you know maybe make a few sniffing sounds to make it a little more interactive. I love my blinky eyes and you know you could blink your eyes and I love my brain so wise. So this is how I would read this book to her. And even though she's three now, sometimes she likes to go back to this book. And um, it's surprising how she does exactly what I used to do then. Now, when I say I love my wiggle toes, she'll go and start tickling her toes on her own or wiggling her toes on her own. So it's amazing how much uh, they learn. Uh, and obviously repetition and uh, exposure to the same book over and over again also plays a role in that. Uh, anything you'd like to add Kavya or before we move to the next segment? No, I think uh, I think you did that brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I do see, uh, you know, some, let me just check my chat box. I don't want to miss anything. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, so we do have a few chats okay great so like i said i'm posting the link one more time in case in case you have any questions please share your questions here and uh, we'll be able to answer them and uh, moving on now to the next age group yeah okay So continuing the reading journey with your child, reading to newly independent readers, building reading stamina and interest. So once your baby has learned how to read, you know, uh, what next? Now your baby, now your child knows how to read. So how do you continue that love? Because you've done your bit by reading to them when they were babies and toddlers. Now they know how to read on their own. So how do you continue with that love? And how do you ensure that you still feed their curiosity with the right selection of books and also manage to enhance their reading stamina. So let's find out uh, that now. Reading to newly independent readers. Come on, Kavya, go for it. Um, okay, so um, when your child is newly independent, um, okay, imagine uh, something that you've been doing every day. What if it suddenly stopped? How would you feel? You'd feel really weird, wouldn't you? So I think it's exactly like that with newly independent readers. Um, when you have been reading to them for a long time, an abrupt stop would really put them off of reading. So I think the best way to take this uh, forward is to keep reading to your baby in small doses, in slightly medium doses too. Uh, keep reading to them because you know, again, like, uh, like I said earlier, they're used to that time. They're used to that bonding time. So don't just abruptly stop. I think, I think eventually, gradually, um, you can pass the hold to them. But initially, I think always read to them, keep reading to them. And sometimes, yes, make them read on their own too. But don't stop the habit all at once. Because uh, that would just, that would be too... And it would make them uncomfortable. It would just put them off of reading. 
Yeah, I think uh, I agree with you because see, if you've uh, done this right from the beginning, if you've uh, always read to your baby and suddenly when you realize that, okay, now my baby can read on his or her own, uh, don't thrust the book onto them and tell them, okay, now you can read, so I, I'm not going to read to you. Or here's a book, read this first paragraph for me. You know, like don't make a task out of it. And believe me, you're going to miss it once they start telling you that, okay, now I want to do this on my own. I don't want to co-read with you. So enjoy the time for as long as you can. Um, a lot of times, uh, in fact, my son is 10 now. And uh, even now at times, my husband and I read to him. Not everything. He's an independent reader. He reads books on his own. But some things we like to explore together as a family, like maybe short story books, anthologies. I read to him. My husband likes to read nonfiction to him. So um, we have these co-reading times mm -hmm. and uh, he has his independent reading time as well. But I do remember, uh, you know, I got asked this question by somebody that, uh, you know, my son is eight, he can read so well and yet he wants me to keep reading. He doesn't read anything at all by himself. And I uh, told the parent that, you know what, just enjoy it while you can because it's going to stop sooner or later. And I recently got a call from her saying that, yeah, I mean, now he's discovered books on his own and he doesn't want me to read. He likes reading them on his own. So I think they just take that time and you should give them that time to sort of wean them off you yeah. and um, try to continue if you can, you know, because it's just a precious bonding exercise uh, with your child to co-read. Um, also, um, this particular thing, I mean, the last point over here is, they want to read the same series all the time. So, you know, six, that age group is a very interesting age because they they are learning uh, new, uh, new, learning new things about themselves. They're learning to comprehend and uh, understand more. Their world is expanding. Yet, um, something familiar gives them comfort. So, if they're again and again going back to the same book or the same series, I don't think you should stop them. You should let them because it's like, um, uh, it's like, say, suppose that my son finishes a heavy book or a series, he always goes back to a lighter one, which he's read like 10 times. Yeah. So I always ask him, why are you doing that? You've always read it. But he says, it's my comfort read. And I think I see a lot of value in those words. Yeah. Kavya, would you like to say something about that? Yeah, yeah, actually, I agree with him. Um, uh, that happens to me too. Uh, sometimes I... I go, so when I'm reading something heavy, that's, you know, that's taken a lot of headspace for me. I usually go back to a series. I watch something uh, and there's only one series that I maybe go back to. What happens is that when you're familiar with the character and you've liked them, you've admired them, you know, you've grown with them. What happens is that they sort of become your friend, your family. And yeah, they, they become like your go-to person. <laughs> Characters can also become that. So yes, um, when you go to them, you go to them for comfort. You also go to them because you don't want to meet another new character or face a new book, a new story. You're not ready for it just yet. So you go to something that you've already read, you, you're familiar with. And that just helps you process the whole thing. Also get the space that you need from it. But mostly just to process and absorb because you're not yet ready for a new story. And that's completely okay too. I also wanted to add... Uh, at this stage, what happens is that a lot of times uh, there's a lot of pressure that, you know, they, they ought to read on their own. Um, I think just something that I wanted to say, it's best if you can, the more, the longer you can avoid that pressure. And I know as parents also we're under pressure, but just try to avoid passing on that pressure of you know, read on, uh, what level of reading are you? Just avoid passing on that pressure because that pressure, again, also puts them off of reading. And I think that's a very important point. Sorry to interrupt you because I just thought of something. I mean, I once saw in a book fair, uh, a child was getting drawn towards a picture book mm -hmm. and the parent immediately said, that's a baby book. Don't buy this, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I, I immediately saw the, you know, the face of the child sort of falling and, I, I, I didn't want to obviously intervene then, but I feel that when we do that, we raise the bar for them and we somehow make them, you know, sort of, we put them off books yeah. by doing that. Exactly. See, even as adults, we find difficult to deal with pressure. So, of course, it's very difficult for a child that age. Um, so, uh, just try to avoid it for 
as long as you can avoid it altogether if you can um and that's how if you don't put any pressure to reading that's when they read just for the joy of it and that's that's the whole point completely agree with you reading for the joy of reading yeah, yeah. okay so uh, on that note i think this is a very important slide because uh, parents of course well meaning as they are educators um, you know we want an outcome and uh, the questions are what is my child learning what is the outcome of reading um even though my child reads a lot i don't see him using uh, you know the words and the vocabulary in his speaking or writing um uh, and making it task based like i i sit with a dictionary with my child i ask my child to underline underline difficult words look up the new words and what activities can i do after reading a book so i put all these questions together on this slide because um i think i'd like to uh, you know approach them together one is of course like kavya said you know don't put that pressure on them when it comes to reading and picking up from there i feel that see reading has many many advantages uh, love for language vocabulary comprehension understanding people understanding emotions building life skills these are obvious uh, advantages of reading storytelling exposing children to books communicating with them so these are obvious uh, you know outcomes so uh, if we begin measuring them or if we begin putting a pressure on our children that okay i want to achieve something after they've read this particular book or i want to sit with a dictionary fine great you want their language to be enhanced but that will automatically happen but the moment you make a task out of it you again put that pressure on them and it becomes another to do thing you know um and then again you know you see them shirking it you'll see that they're not interested because again you know you're expecting an outcome out of it so don't add elements uh, like that i think uh, what you could do though to make it a fulfilling experience for you and the child is co read uh, or maybe try and read the same book together you know maybe one after the other maybe you and your child read the book together not co co engage but maybe you read it separately and he reads it separately and later discuss the characters the plot the twists i think these conversations should be organic they shouldn't be forced the moment they become organic i think uh, you'll have a reader there so what do you feel um i feel i feel we need to change the way we see reading i think so reading is essentially it's an entertaining activity right um and that's how um, if you look at generations before us they before us our grandparents they used to read for fun they did not have these all these mediums so reading was essentially for fun so i think we need to start seeing reading as something that is not a chore it's fun and uh, that's how that you need to read just for the for the pleasure of it and that's how if you approach reading like that i think they'll also like it they'll want to read more because then you're doing it just for fun there's no added agenda to it extra agenda to it and okay. i feel also i feel um i feel yes vocabulary is important Ex being able to express yourself is very important but i think that happens eventually slowly and uh, i also feel that vocabulary is it okay yes uh, it's it's an outcome of reading like you said there are so many obvious ones um but it's there are also other more silent more silent indicators of reading and uh, so if you are raising a reader when your child is reading you see eventually that you know you see reading seeping into their their manners their habits the way the way their mind works and you see their behavior their personality evolving with reading you will see you know if they find a character they like they might pick a habit from them and you might not notice them can happen on a very subconscious level for them for the reader themselves and you might notice it a little later so uh, so believe in the power of reading is what i'm trying to say <laughs> uh, even if you don't see short term results i think in the long run you will see your baby picking up habits your child picking up habits and you know imbibing them so believe in the power of books 
uh, yeah very well said uh, i think books and stories are powerful and i think we need to believe in them and also trust our children um, exactly. you know when it comes to books um, i just want to make an announcement there are a lot of questions coming in on the link that we've shared we will be answering all your questions um, uh, you know uh, as soon as we are done with these segments so we will come back to those questions but do keep posting your questions as and when you think of them and we'll be answering all your questions uh, moving on with the next set of questions uh, some books have no moral or value takeaways should i pick those books now uh, also certain books i feel can harm my child's personality these are questions that came to us and i'm just reading them out and we'll uh, answer these for you uh, you know there are certain series like say the horrid henry series is making my child naughty and the world war series is making my child unhygienic books with naughty protagonists toilet humor <laughs> so um i think i'd i'd like to plunge into this one uh, first um uh, again you know not all stories um, and books need to have a moral or a value uh, you know based outcome or a takeaway it's okay for a story to not have a, a moral or a lesson attached to it also um takeaways depend upon our individual interpretations how we are feeling at that point in time what our state of mind is like and that's what the takeaway you know for me i may interpret a book in a certain way depending on my state of mind that time and for kavya it may be completely different and for your child it may be absolutely different because uh, interpretations are based on our own individual experiences and emotions so i think uh, i wouldn't care much about uh, values and moral takeaways yes books have uh, amazing uh, takeaways like we already mentioned but don't read with that purpose in your mind to your child don't book pick a book saying that okay you know i'm picking this book because i want to uh, build this kind of a moral in my uh, you know my child to have this particular kind of a skill or whatever that will happen automatically the other is particular series like say the horrid henry series or you know i just you know we just put in a few names that came to us but um, i think uh, a lot of times uh, i feel that children are uh, smarter than we imagine them to be and i don't think um, maybe a character can have an impact on them but it will be very temporary so it, it can't shape their personality permanently it can't as long as you keep exposing them to an active dose of books and stories um they may get influenced by a certain uh, uh, story setting or a certain character but they won't become like that believe me and um, also uh, you know talking about naughty protagonists and toilet humor uh, so there's this series and i like to share an experience so there's this series by dav pilki called captain underpants and um, it's very popular when it comes to you know children they they really love it but it's usually frowned upon by parents and by librarians educators because of the uh, toilet humor in the book and also there are a lot of misspellings so um i uh, i feel that these books are brilliant for many reasons one is um, i think um, children love humor and it's it's something that they get attracted to so if we have a reluctant reader a book like that may attract that child to pick up a book and read it so that's one um children do get attracted to toilet humor but i think the underlying uh, you know message the underlying message in that series is uh, good prevailing over evil also at the same time uh, you know somehow i've seen a lot of children getting encouraged to create their own uh, graphic novels after reading captain underpants they get uh, inspired by the two protagonists in the in the book and um, the misspelling as far as you know so these two kids are george and harold and as far as the misspellings is concerned uh, we did an interesting activity where we actually uh, sat with the children and said okay let's figure out what are the words george and harold are misspelling and that became a wonderful activity you know post the book so um, i think one can look at it you know as a book with a silver lining there but um, yeah i feel that uh, we shouldn't stop our children from reading any particular books because then it becomes like the forbidden fruit you may forbid them and then they'll they'll want to somehow or the other want to read it because mom and dad are stopping us from reading it so yeah kavya what do you think um yeah i uh, i agree with most uh, everything that you said i think every book that uh, any any reader is reading i think 
with every book that you read you learn something you also unlearn something and every book that you read it becomes a part of you in some way um and as for negative uh, negative habits or uh, uh, you know habits that, that may you may think that are going to negatively influence your child i think um they might pick it up for a little while like you said it but it it is just a phase and it will pass they'll find another character that they'll admire even more after this book and then they'll probably start emulating that character so um it's just a phase it will pass anything too negative i mean you need to have faith that it will not stick around with them permanently it will not <laughs> they'll only accept what works positively for them in their environment at the end of the day so um so uh, for any of these i think uh, let them read and also what you said about humor i think humor is one thing it can turn people in again what you said kids into readers i think what the authors are trying to do here is just trying to uh, try a flavor of humor that actually works for that audience and uh, that's why these series they also have big fandoms they have big followings it's because the humor works for the for the intended audience and once the child finds a book funny again they they will be hooked they will not want to stop and as for not yeah. yeah and as for naughty protagonists i think um, i think it's okay for children to be naughty it's the age it's the beauty of that age um it's great uh, i i honestly i love naughty protagonists i i think naughty protagonists or naughty characters were my favorite characters in most books in harry potter i think the weasley and twins were my hero more than anybody else so uh, so so naughty protagonists are okay they are completely fine uh, like i said they'll only accept the negative things will wear off they'll overgrow them um they won't stick around for too long yes absolutely um okay so <clears throat> this is uh, something that is linked to the previous uh, you know discussion that we were having on certain types of books and certain genres and picking up from you know moving now from naughty characters and toilet humor and you know maybe some forbidden stuff that we don't want our kids to be exposed to to now to more um, you know dark themes like talking about death violence mm-hmm. um there's this uh, there was this uh, you know uh, parent uh, and uh, i mean we put it down here she stopped her child from going forward with the harry potter series because it started getting very dark so what do you think about uh, you know dark themes and death and violence i think it's completely okay i think what stories do is prepare us for the unknown <laughs> they prepare us uh, you know to be able to face the things when they come our way it's completely okay and as for talking to younger audiences about death and grief i think i think children are way more practical i think so when we think of the word any negative word we start to associate negativity with it from experience because you know as adults we've experienced negative emotions with it but for a child that word is just a word uh, i mean for a baby it carries no for now for their lack of experience they, it doesn't carry a very heavy emotion with it so they are very practical about it and they are very they'll take it for facts they'll accept it as facts yeah i think they are very very uh, resilient they are tough tough right. than we imagine them to be and as far as uh, death and dark and violent themes are concerned i have seen uh, both my children even my 3 year old we've read books about uh, you know darker themes and together you know like the loss of a pet and uh, sometimes she says i don't want to read it because it makes me sad and we respect that but i've seen my both my kids grow especially my 10 year old you know grow and his thoughts mature and him being very open to these uh, things and i think uh, we're doing them a service by exposing them and books are amazing because that's a great way to break ice when it comes to these tough talks mm-hmm. uh, there are books on depression um, you know uh, which have been written for children and there are books on death of a loved one because you know this is something that is the reality of life and i don't think we can protect them and we should protect them for you know uh, deliberately uh, in fact expose them and books are a great way to do that in fact it will prepare them it will yeah. prepare them for when it comes their way it will also make them more empathetic if they find somebody who is facing a similar situation so absolutely 
uh okay so transitioning from new readers to independent readers um how do you ease that transition now so you know we've talked about we've talked about babies and toddlers we've talked about uh, say 6 6 to 8 year olds who are learning how to read but yet need a little bit of hand holding and now uh, we are moving from that hand holding phase to full blown independent reading so how do we ease that transition what kind of books work for this age are there any good indian authors besides the popular ones like ruskin bond and uh, sudha murthy so um, i think my advice before i ask kavya to contribute her bit would be that help them to move from the known to the unknown we spoke a little bit about it before as well uh, they like familiarity what they are uh, you know used to so uh, don't take that away completely from them don't say that you know this is a baby book don't read this i think everything that they've read should always remain available to them it should remain accessible so the bookshelf you may keep you know changing the books but just don't put them away or don't give them away you know they may want to come back to those books at some point so um, i think uh, let them going, keep going back to their comfort reads and um, let them choose what they want to read don't uh, i know you want to maybe for with me it was like that when i, I when i had when i realized that my son is 8 uh, i really wanted him to read the harry potter series because i'm a huge fan and i said okay i want you to read this but i realized that if i show too much excitement around it and try to push or pressure him into it he'll not uh, you know be ready for it and then what i started doing was i started reading it on my own and then that's how he took to it so um what do you have to say uh yeah i agree with you so i think this sticks is a very crucial age it's a tricky age um once they're phonetically trained um i mean they're almost see technically speaking they are ready to be independent readers but yes to transition them from from you know having that habit and to become actually independent i think always ease them into it um you know <laughs> hold their hand for a little bit longer um let them have their picture books find picture books that uh, that are more like Uh, take them uh, take them through a progressing range of picture books um, so now you can find books picture books that have more texts and uh, that have no playful fonts and you know playful elements in them um, so find picture books like that that will have more words also more to read as well and then uh, it'll have you know pictures also just so they can be comfortable so that they can be eased into moving on from that stage um after that i think ease them into there are there there's this whole um you know set of books uh, that are completely unexplored uh, or slightly un- i feel avoided um so we expect kids to go from picture books to novels but that's a very big change for them a novel can be very intimidating looking for a very new reader and i think that's what again that's why in this age a lot of children don't like lose the habit i think they lose the habit because a novel can be too intimidating to approach um but there are a lot of books that are intended for this age so there are these early chapter books that work for kids who are just moving on from picture books are ready to move on from picture books but are not ready for a full fledged novel so these early chapter books will have smaller chapters illustrations too and it will just help them you know go like they're moving um they're progressing on a at a sl- at a slower pace and i think that can be comforting uh, for them also again uh, like you mentioned don't uh, abruptly stop the habit of reading with them um read with them uh, continue reading with them for chapter books always like read the first few chapter books with them you can start with just telling them that i'll read you one chapter i am telling you they will not want to stop because the chapters are so well done i mean they wouldn't want to stop they would want to continue the story right right yes, we are also you. running a little late so maybe we can you know quickly go okay. over the next few slides okay. 
so um i i think um, you know like you were talking about and we've got this as a question as well how to choose the right books and like you mentioned so um, <clears throat> for this newly independent readers like you mentioned you know early chapter books books with humor so we put together this slide for you but um, we are also carrying some of the books here and of course we'll share our recommendations with you by way of a link by the end of this webinar you'll receive an email from our end and you know with a few book recommendations as well but uh, i'm carrying a few so maybe you want to take a screenshot of this you know as a ready reckoner for you but uh, at the same time um, you know remember that short sentences paragraphs chapters word repetition and i think some books that i'm going to show you now are ideal for this age group so like kavya mentioned early chapter books so there's this whole book series uh, you know that has been published by uh, duck bill and i have a few books here with me all these books are really amazing and you know they're very short so uh, it's very comforting for a child who's become a newly independent reader like see there are just 65 pages in this book and uh, look at the font size as well and plus there are a few illustrations still inside you know so it's not that they've completely moved from uh, uh, picture books to novels so you see that so this is one series i feel that really works for newly independent readers the other one would be probably something like this you know this is a book called wingless by parwanel this is slightly wordier as compared to an early chapter book because see if you see the amount of text on each page it's a lot but at the same time it's richly illustrated so these illustrations will still give a new independent reader uh, you know some kind of uh, uh, solace and at the same time confidence to keep going so something like this and another book that i really like is uh, this is by an international um, publisher so this is called the dog who lost his bark and um, again it is wordy but at the same time it has lovely illustrations and it's a chapter book but wordier than the 65 page whole book that i showed you so these are a, a great selection to expose new readers to we have been getting a lot of questions so i'm going to rush to the next segment and kavya maybe we can keep it quick yeah. uh, moving on now to the next segment so that we can spend about 10 minutes answering those questions i'm sure a lot have already been answered in this conversation but we'll still take them up uh moving on now to teens you know young adults these are uh, independent readers uh, the don't disturb me i'm reading in my room readers so uh, yeah so how do you transition from you know to novellas novels full fledged reading go ahead kavya dive in um so uh, how to get my child to read if you have i mean if they have not been reading up to now i um, if there's a correct age to becoming a reader i would say no <laughs> there's no correct age there's no right age you can become a reader at any point you can become a reader as a teenager i've seen people who become readers in college in their 40s even so you can become a reader any day it's about finding that one book that will work for you that will give you a character that you really admire so um so uh, if you know your teen does not read i think um, um be on the lookout like expose them that's the thing that you can do expose them to books take them to stores libraries um make sure that they have this that we see the variety you know that's the offerings and then they can decide what they like um let them choose and um uh, you know and also always like i said before also make stories and everyday conversations share your story like whatever you've experienced from books tell them about a character that you you know that you've really liked and why you really like them tell them about uh, a story that 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 stuck in your head because you, you know it gave it gave you confidence or something so whatever you are reading uh tell share stories about that with them that will make them curious about reading i think when you keep uh, talking about books and stories that's the that's the best thing that you can do. i think what i'd like to add here is uh, my own personal journey as a reader so unlike you kavya i was a late bloomer into reading i started reading books much later uh, than you did uh, mm -hmm. so uh, my experience with reading was very uh, my um, although my i was exposed to books and stories a lot while growing up i was still a reluctant reader and i didn't really pick up books when i was a child uh, my elder sister was a voracious reader and uh, so was my mom but uh, it took me time 
going to get hooked but i started reading when i was in college and um, before that my exposure to books was very very you know less in the sense in personal in the independent reading and um, when i started and that's because i got the right company i got a safe space to ex you know ex uh, express myself and i guess i got a reading buddy and that's really helped me you know so i think uh, that question was like if i did not read to my child when my child was a baby or you know when my child was an early reader uh, i have known of people who started reading much later even in their 30s or 40s you know they turned into readers so there's still scope for your uh, child there um yeah so uh, i think we'll quickly go to the next slide uh, and uh, how to choose books for my teen um i think goes, you know you did yeah you did cover quite a bit about it uh, this is one question about the wimpy kids series we get a lot of you know this question all the time and somehow it's um, considered uh, not a great series to by some parents although this is like my go to my son's go to series and you mine at times i find them really hilarious so um what would you like to say about this and the classics and uh, yeah anything else that we missed out um again uh Wimpy kid, I think humor is a big factor. I think for this age, humor and relatability are two factors that you know buys you readers. <laughs> so um, the, the Wimpy kid, I think those two, it, it wins on those two accounts. There's humor, and uh, most children relate to it. So it's just it's a it's a protagonist that a lot of children just relate to, and that's the appeal of the of the story. So it's not like they enjoy that he's being or he's using a certain kind of language. It's just that. they find his his situations or his weirdness or something about him you know ap approachable like a friend it feels like a friend again like i said um so uh, so it's okay um, if you feel that they are being aggressive it, that the series is making them aggressive just know that it's a phase they will grow out of it like i said they found one character that they really admire and relate to but they find more when they're reading they'll find another book and they'll find another character that they'll admire that they'll start admiring and then maybe they'll they this habit will grow out um i think about um, you know classics this is again something that um, you know we i get asked a lot because i think um, we have certain aspirations for our children and um, it's great you know to expose them to classics but i think a child will get to a book when the child is ready yeah. for it yeah. you know so i think uh, that's a very important point so never force your child into and what works you know if i really want my kid to read something what works is um, if i read that alongside and show enthusiasm around it instead of forcing it on my child Mm -hmm. and even then you know my child like avya said read one chapter and then you know say okay let's read one chapter together and if you don't like it then it's okay i mean there's no pressure so they either uh, you know want to go on or not hmm. so yeah. that yeah yeah classics i also feel that um i i get the aspirations i get the list like you the need to meet a list but uh, with classics see the language is in a lot of classics the language is quite quite different from what we were, were used to so they can be complex they can be difficult for teens for most ages to get through uh, again uh, pick slight like pick up easier ones <laughs> um if you if you really want to pick up modern classics as opposed to classic classics wait for classic classics until they're slightly older um again they'll pick it up when they feel ready when they feel that the language is more approachable like for them um so uh, with classics wait i think um, once they are a reader they find those lists like they start making their own lists that they want to absolutely know, like, that they become part of book clubs and yeah, you know like yeah. where they look or seek uh, recommendations and they'll find reading buddies and i think then 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 that's a journey that you probably got them started on and then it will be a journey for life exactly. so yeah um moving on to um, you know how to choose the right book and uh, also you know we will be sharing a book list with you as well like i mentioned um, so check your emails after this but um, yeah you know this right here in front of you let them choose is the most important uh, point i am getting this question a lot even in the uh, the poll the the q and a the link that i share 
what to read so yeah, yeah. Um, so i'm going to move on now uh, because we are at you know we've anyway exceeded the time so we're moving on now um i'd like to uh, before uh, before we answer the questions, I'd like to quickly introduce you all to a book club that we are going to be starting, uh, uh, you know, very soon. Uh, this is a, a Nutspace and Bookistan initiative. This is a book club for six to seven year olds at the moment. And we are hoping to start for more age groups um, as time goes. Uh, but uh, Kavya, would you like to introduce the club to everybody? Um, sure. Okay. Um, so the idea of the book club is uh, we pick this age because uh, like you were saying we find this age crucial because this is the age when a lot of readers lose the habit of reading that's why we wanted to target this age because they're newly independent um also um you know this is a belief that we have that when you having passionate conversations about books is what makes a reader is what makes a person who doesn't read into a reader and so that's the whole idea uh, of the of the book club um, we select books that are age appropriate that we feel are conversation that we want the children to have and to start and then we bring them together and they can have the conversation they can talk about it you know with peers who also understand books and who like books um, so that's the whole idea behind uh, project enlit um, our goal is to again raise lifelong readers, um, readers who stay on as readers to uh, develop this undying passion for reading. And um, 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 so we have this whole thing planned out and uh, we've brokered it into uh, three levels. We're uh, going, we're discovering, exploring five books per level. Again, they'll all be specially curated, keeping the audience participants in mind. The participants will also be assessed and um, uh, we'll interact with them, we we'll assess them and we'll, uh, you know, assign them to these levels that we've created. And um, uh, like I said, so each level, they'll be introduced to five books. In all, they'll be introduced to 15 books through the year. Uh, so that's the plan that we have and um, um, we're very excited for this <laughs> we want to we want to build a community of readers that stay on as readers and th th that also have you know books can also lead to great friendships so maybe uh, this is our, sort of our way of starting great relationships across the countries <laughs> for every age um, so uh, so that's project endless yeah, thank you so much for sharing uh, that. I've also um, shared a link uh, in the chat box right now. Please do fill up this questionnaire. It's going to help us um, understand you and, you know, help us help you with regular book recommendations and other things. So I've shared it again in the chat box. Please do fill it up. Um, moving on now. Um, so I have the questions here with me and I'm going to quickly go through the questions uh, and in case we've missed out on anything uh, we'll try to answer them so um, how to make a two-year-old select books and make them read uh, see okay so the, this question uh, again for a two-year-old uh, as a parent you are the one who's selecting the book so uh, we already shared a slide with you on what kind of books you should pick up you know like board books and picture books with a uh, big bright illustrations fewer text the less text and more illustrations so those are the kind of books that you can pick up for your uh, two-year-old um the ideal way to approach a book with a two-year-old would be to co-read and uh, so that would be the best um the next uh, make them read um i don't think you should make uh, try to make them read i think read to them is uh, the approach that you should take uh, at that age um uh, uh, tips on storytelling and bedtime read also yeah for uh, people who are here uh, people with toddlers and babies there was another webinar that i had conducted on how to read to babies and toddlers so uh, soon after this webinar you'll receive an email from us and we'll share the link of that webinar as well which you can uh, watch and listen to uh, you know in your own time that will give you a lot of tips on storytelling story reading approaching books with the younger uh, lot um uh, some books okay so i have twins how to read to both is sometimes their interest varies with books that's a very interesting question and i think um, you should respect uh, kavya I'll jump in whenever you feel uh, you know uh, okay i'm sorry <laughs> okay yeah is that okay 
I'm asking. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, with twins, uh, I'm sure respect to the fact that they like uh, different things. And I think expose them to what they like. Don't try to make them both read the same book because I don't think that's a very good idea. And that's fair to them. Uh, Kavya, would you like to say something there? agree uh, yeah, you agree completely okay we we do have um, you know some yes please ask your questions you can post them in the chat box also i do have a message from parishi midha can i ask something please post your questions here also even if you've not posted them in the link uh, okay so then i have another uh, how does one embed the reading routine in a child who's never read till the age of 12 we okay. did answer this yes uh, but in case um, you want to add something i i think the best is to find them a reading buddy if or you, you become, can't yeah sorry or you become the buddy the parent exactly become, the parent become the buddy one of the parents uh, you know uh, and if you don't have the time then find them a you know like minded people a group uh, who reads and you know uh, so that they can discuss books and uh, all that because i think the moment uh, uh, you have a space to share uh, that's where you get encouraged to read more um there was one question how to make reading interesting and not a cumbersome task as difficult words deter them from moving ahead and uh, reaching out for a dictionary is herculean to them i completely agree with you and we did uh, talk about it as well please don't uh, uh, you know let them read uh, yeah. And they are not deterred by. <laughs> I mean, no, they, even if you are reading, say suppose I mean, how many times? Suppose you are reading, okay? If, if there are difficult words, at least you understand the essence context. of what is written. You'll understand the context. You'll understand what's happening. Unless you pick a book that is completely not your level, I mean, then that's not a book for you. Yeah. Um, but if you're reading a book that is a that is meant for your age, if a child is reading a book that is meant okay. for their age, if they find a few difficult words, it's completely okay. Of course, they'll find them. And I still don't sometimes pick up, I most of the time don't pick up dictionaries. That's okay too. You understand the context. And you know, those words do get stored in your head some, somehow. And even the context does. So. And you know, interestingly, I want to just add something about the dictionary. So um, a lot of times you read a meaning in the dictionary. I don't know if it sticks. So I think um, uh, maybe you would want to check out Natspace's vocab act videos on our YouTube channel. You know, we've uh, acted out words so that you can understand the meaning. So again, you know, story fine so that you can get the meaning. That should help you as well. Um, what type of story should I read to pre-primary students in schools? Uh, should it only be moral based? So this is something that uh, I did answer. It's not necessary that you uh, look for a moral or a value uh, based lesson when it comes to reading to your children. It's okay to not have um, any takeaway as such. But uh, at the same time, um, you know, for primary school, folk tales work very well. They like folk tales, children um, that age group. You could pick up an early chapter book like this that we showed you and um, you know so any story that you like i think you expose your children to that and you'll just know in your heart that okay this is the one that i want to tell my children so superheroes also works for that reason yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's also another one okay uh my son is a timetable driven child is it okay he's not self-driven okay so if your child likes structure uh, that's okay. Uh, so you can integrate, like identify the time when your child is not overstimulated or overtired. And maybe you could identify that time where you can co-engage uh, with your child on a book. And uh, once you get your child used to that, then slowly you'll realize that your child will independently take, take that on, you know, it will become a part of his body clock or his system or his timetable and structure. And uh, yeah, I suppose we have answered. What should I read to my 10 year old? Um, so I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so actually, yeah, for a 10 year old, um, re again, re start with an early chapter book, maybe lightly illustrated if they're not used to um, books at all. Like something like this would really work. Again, superheroes is a theme that really works for that age. And um, lightly illustrated <laughs> chapter book, though. <laughs> um, so something like that would really work. Just find something that has been broken into chapters and that also has some, has yeah. some pictures. 
see also there's one more thing very important and that is that you know when it comes to the age of a child every child has a different reading level so i don't think you can really let the age decide maybe a 10 year old is finding comfort in an early chapter book and maybe there is another 10 year old that has sort of graduated to maybe say verdier books or maybe full fledged novels and series so that's for you to decide what your child is ready for and um, if it's a new reader then i think uh, even exposing them to picture books is a great way to get them started on their journey into reading um, so i think uh, that's a call that you take as a parent so i think uh, we have uh, sort of uh, covered everything if we've missed out on anything please um, do reach out to us um, i am uh, posting this form one more time for whoever is here please do fill it up and share it with us you'll also receive an email from us uh, with various book recommendations for different age groups you will receive an email with the uh, the previous webinar links and uh, you know details of the book club that is coming up uh, so yes please do uh, take a look at your email and fill up the form link uh, that will be there in the email as well we do hope we've answered your questions as far as raising a reader is concerned and um, are concerned and i um, i hope that uh, you know you enjoy this journey of books and reading with your child um kavya would you like to give any closing remarks yeah good luck with your reading journey with your child reading journey i hope that you will find that that just the right book for your child and i hope that we succeed in raising readers <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be doing regular webinars on more topics, so uh, keep in touch and follow us. Uh, all our uh, details over here, uh, you know, are over here. So do reach out to us. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good evening and a wonderful weekend. Bye bye.